Hello. In this video, I'm going to quickly show how to use parameters and parameter spaces in Tink. This will be using Tink standalone in Python without the client server uh, connection. So I'm going to prepare importing of Tink, and this is for Tink version 0.9. So first we import parameters, and parameters must have a unique name, a unique identifier. You can query the values through the value member, and you can set the values. You can also set boundaries for parameters using maximum and minimum. And then if you, see it, if you try to set a value that's outside the boundary, it will just clamp it to within the value. You can also discretize the possible values that the parameter can take uh, by setting the values member. So you can see here, these are the possible values that it can take. If I set something outside of bounds, it will be clamped again. And if I set something that's not exactly one of the values, it will just round it up to the closest one that exists or that's uh, available. You can also uh, trigger computation from parameter changes. You do this by defining a function that takes the new value for the parameter. So in this case, it will just uh, print. And then what you do is you register this function as a callback to the parameter. And then what happens is that whenever the parameter changes, it will trigger the value. So you can see it got called, plus it got clamped to within the possible values. You can also um, define a list of IDs that um, are connected to each of the values. And this can be useful to map uh, parameter values to the file system if you need specific names for them. Or, for example, in this case, if there's kind of some unusual rounding, uh, saying the file system names. So if you set a value, you can then request the current ID and it will set the, the values there. You can see this uh, got uh, rounded to the closest one. Parameter spaces in Tink are uh, classes that group and manage parameters, right? So when you put a parameter into a parameter space, it becomes a dimension within this uh, parameter space. Again, you just create the parameter space, giving it a name. And then what you have to do is register the parameters you have already created with the parameter space. A parameter space becomes useful, uh, for example, to uh, create um, file system paths from the current values of parameters. This can be useful, for example, to investigate um, or explore uh, data sets where the, the, you, you run a sweep and then the directory names depend on the uh, sweep values. So you can see here I have a token that will be replaced by the current uh, temperature value and another token here that will be replaced by the current ID for the current chemical potential value. So I just set the template, and then if I get the current path, you can see that they've been replaced. If I set a different value, then of course that changes. You can also execute functions through the parameter space, right? To have it be run with the current values in the parameter space. All you have to do is define a function that takes arguments that are named like parameters in the parameter space. So you can see here, it ran and passed the, the current values to that processor. You can also uh, have the parameter space manage caching for you. So any process that you run through the parameter space will be cached. In this case, I'm gonna define a function that's gonna take a little bit longer time and that returns a certain value. So whatever you return from this function will be cached. So you can see the first time around is gonna take a while to run, right? Here's the value that it produced. And then if I run it again, because it's gonna have the same uh, parameters going to be in the same sample of the parameter space, it will be using cache and will return immediately. If I change the value, it will again take about three seconds to produce the output. But if I try it again, it will be um, very fast because it's running cache. And then I can go to a previously existing cache value. You can see that um, the callback is still being run. And you can see that it, again, it uses cache. Uh, all of these things together um, lead to uh, the ability of the parameter uh, space to do sweeps. So you can just pass the function you want to sweep through and then the parameter space will start running through all the permutations of, the, of all of the available parameters, effectively doing a sweep of the parameter space with caching. So in future videos, uh, I'm going to explain how you can connect uh, these classes to a Tink server that can run in C++ as well as all of the other convenience classes to manage data sets in Tink.